Let us pray. Oh Lord God, we come into this space of worship tonight to remember. And not just to remember, God, but to encounter you and the reality of your presence here with us. God, to be wrapped up into your story. For just as sure as you met with the disciples on that night and you shared this meal with them, you were here with us to share a meal with us now, to offer us your grace, your mercy, and your presence. God, and it's for that reason that we look to you, we give you thanks, and we ask that you would come and be with us now. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing hymn number 290, Go to Darkness. <laughs> Be seated. Before the message tonight, just thank you for being here tonight and remind you that tomorrow morning we'll have the Stations of the Cross beginning here on the steps of First Methodist and going through town carrying the cross and telling the story of Jesus' last hours. And it's a very powerful experience for all who can be there. And hope that you can share in that if, if you're available tomorrow. We'll start about 9 o'clock here and end up at St. Uh, St. Joseph Church at the other side of town. Tomorrow evening, a, a time of prayer, a time of meditation, a time of reflection on all that Christ has done for us. Uh, I think it will be a very powerful service and hope that you can be here tomorrow night, 7 p.m., uh, a service of Good Friday, a service of, 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 of remembering Jesus and, and all, of his, all of his grace and all of his sacrifice. Then come Easter morning sunrise service will be 7 o'clock at the Connection building, then 840 service here, 8, 11 o'clock at here, and Connection as we celebrate the good news that Jesus is risen. But tonight we remember the Last Supper, and we're using the Last Supper story from John's Gospel. 
So often we read the Bible in little pieces, a verse here, a parable there, maybe one Old Testament story, maybe we know a few Psalms. And, and those various bits and pieces are nice, but sometimes we seldom see how they fit together in context and how this whole story comes to be what God has given us. And one of those stories that fits together so well is John's telling of the events, particularly the teachings of the Last Supper. It's a long section, but to me those chapters 14, 15, 16, 17 of, of John are, are vitally important because they represent Jesus' final words to the disciples before the cross. They don't realize what's happening. He knows all too well what is about to take place. So the words are filled with a certain urgency and poignancy and power. They are in many ways Jesus' farewell message. He starts off, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You've heard those words before. You hear those words many times. You hear them just about every funeral. But you may not realize that is the beginning of Jesus' long speech at the Last Supper, the one which he had shared with his disciples. And so try to imagine hearing these words as the disciples heard them in that setting, at that time, in his presence from his own lips, but them not knowing what's about to come. Jesus continues, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus said to him, and you can imagine the tiredness of Jesus' voice. Again, Jesus knowing this is, this is the end. Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. He does speak a, a, of leaving them a, as it goes on. A little while longer, the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. And that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. And then he tells them that after he is gone, there, there will be this, this help, this assistance, this comforter. These things I have spoken to you while still being present with you. But the helper... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I, because I said, I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And, and he, he, Jesus has been teaching them all along, but he gives them these, these instructions. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down one's life for his friends. And of course, they don't yet know what that's going to mean. You are called, my friends, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what the master is doing, but I've called you friends. For all that I heard from my Father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me. 
But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask in the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you. You love one another. And he goes on and, and talks for, for several chapters. But his final word to them is this. Indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, it's now come. That you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And then he prays. He prays for his disciples. He leaves the disciples on the edge of a very scary night. He knows how this is going to turn out. He knows that there will be a happy ending. He knows that he will see them again. But he also knows that things will get worse before they get better. And he knows all too well that he just looks and he can see it in their eyes. They don't yet understand. They do not understand. So he tries to give them one more word, a word of power, a word of hope. He's told them exactly what's going to happen. He's told them several times exactly what is going to happen. But that hadn't been enough. It's been obvious that they can't comprehend his betrayal, his arrest, his death. And because they cannot comprehend those things, because they won't even listen to those things, they cannot begin to hear the good news of what will happen next. So Jesus takes this time, this meal, this last supper, to talk to them about hope and about strength, to speak to them of tribulations and fears because he knows those will be real enough. And he tries to point them beyond the immediate difficulties to greater things yet to come. I think those words spoke to the disciples that night. Even though the disciples were quite confused, even though they were frightened, even though they do foolish things, they scattered just as he predicted over the next 24 hours. I think these words spoke to the disciples because the disciples are still together come Sunday morning. They did not understand everything, but they received enough that they did not give up hope. They didn't know exactly what to expect, but they held on to that hope that there was something, something good, something hopeful, something to expect. And even though they couldn't quite figure out what it was, and maybe they didn't even dare believe it would be a resurrection, that's what sustained them till Easter, till they start to see for itself. We won't go through what they went through, but we all have fears. We all have doubts. We all have things that, that frighten us. We all have things that, that challenge our faith. We have tribulation in our lives. As we face those things, we hold tight to Jesus' final word. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your Son. We thank you for his words of hope. We thank you that he could see, and even knowing the, the horror he would have to go through, was willing to endure these things for the hope of what would come after. Help us to hold on to the hope. Help us to know that you are with us. Help us to know that you are taking us somewhere. Help us to put aside our fears and doubts. Help us not get caught up in the tribulations of this life. But help us to follow your son who has overcome this world as he walks us from this world to the next. We remember his words tonight. We remember the holy meal he shared with his disciples. It's in his name that we gather tonight. Amen. The Methodist table is an open table, and any who would share in this means of grace are welcome to join us and receive the invitation to come and share in this holy meal.
I'm going to ask Jake to lead us through the great Thanksgiving confession. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 12. join together in confessing our sins. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now let us join together in praying the great thanksgiving as found on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. And from the same earth you formed us in your image and delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us him, your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, he healed the sick, he ate with the scorned and forgotten, and washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. And the cup is the new covenant in my blood. The body of Christ is given for you. This is Christ's body. I'll invite those who are to assist us to come forward at this time, and as we do, I'll give you a word of instruction that uh, we'll have three stations, one for each section. Uh, come down the, the aisle and go up by the outside. If the folks on this will come by this side and go down the back, the, the choir will sing for us, and then they will come last. There are gluten-free elements if anyone needs them, and you may kneel after you've received communion if you want a time of prayer, and any offering left on the communion rail be used for our missions.
Number 292, What Wonders Love Is This?
Gethsemane, went to Good Friday. Let us go out into the world knowing that God is with us and Christ has overcome the world. Go in peace and go in love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.